ladies and gentlemen, at home, a man who needs no introduction. Our number three. There's been many a Nick that wore number three, but there's only one number three that counts in my book. John Starks is here with us. John, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. Thank, thanks for joining us. Thank, thanks for joining us today. So uh, we're here kicking off and, and previewing the next season, 2021-22 season. Uh, what, what's been your thoughts on this team? You know, they, they surprised the league, making the four seed last year and mm -hmm. making it to the playoffs. And it's a lot of expectations for this team this year. Well, what's your thoughts on the roster composition and, uh, and your outlook for the team? Well, the, the roster is, I think, is perfect. Um, you know, you got a mixture of uh, young players along with veteran players. Mm -hmm. You know, the likes of uh, Derrick Rose, uh, Todd Gibson, uh, all these guys uh, stepped up big time last year, uh, especially Derrick. You know, uh, seemed like he turned back the clock yeah, yeah. Uh, during the playoffs. Yeah. And uh, this was very special uh, throughout that whole playoff run. Uh, and Randall, you know, coming back the way he came back yeah. and having the year that he had, you know, and Having Mitchell Robinson back in the fold now, mm -hmm. uh, I got a chance to check him out during uh, preseason mm -hmm. uh, this last game. Uh, he didn't bulk up. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. So, Mitch got bigger. Yeah, so yeah. he he looks good. And, you know, we got some young young players, McBride and, mm -hmm. and Grimes and a lot of these young guys, Sims, uh, which I think could be very good in this mm -hmm. league. Mm -hmm. Uh, so uh, I'm excited. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited, like I am every year <laughs> at the start of the season. And uh, and those guys, and obviously with uh, Tibbs, they're going to go out and they're going to play hard yeah. night in and night out. And, and that's what makes this team special. I think last year they had a, a great identity, uh, defense first, offense second. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, if anybody knows Tibbs, that's what they're going to be, a hard-nosed defensive-minded team. It's not a celebrity golf event if John Stark doesn't have the cigar in the hand. <laughs> cigar aficionado, you know, Stanford Cigar Lounge, yes. your place. What, what, by the way, what makes a good cigar? Like, what's a pristine cigar? What is it? What Mines. makes it? <laughs> <That's> it. <laughs> no, but no, you, you have to have, obviously, uh, good tobacco. Yeah, and, okay. and that's the main thing. And the wrap and the binder is, is very important. And so, uh, and plus, it had to have a smooth draw draw to it. You hate cigars that. When you start pulling on it, you can't, you can't smoke them. You yeah. know what I mean? They go, they go out all the time, but ours don't. So uh, I'm excited about, you know, the cigar that we uh, create. It's called Legend Cigar. So. Well, we have a, a legend here, CP, and yeah. you know, a guy who makes a good coach is Tom Thibodeau, and he's a guy that was an assistant when you were with the Knicks. What's been the progression of Tibbs, the assistant on the late '90s Knicks, to who he is now? Well, uh, I think with any coach, you know, you have to, you have to perfect your perfect your trait and your your art and uh, I think he has done that uh, obviously as a learning curve for any coach uh, who's coming from assistant to head coach because now you you're in charge of, of the show and and so Tibbs had to learn learn a lot of things which he has done that over the course of his uh, career and it's great to see because I was there when he first started out uh, with the Knicks and it's good to see good to see the progression that he has made as a coach and uh, and the respect that he has in this league. Uh, how do you draw the similarities between Tibbs and, and Pat Riley? Uh, just their consummate work ethic. Uh, Tibbs is a worker as you all know. Uh, Jeff was the same way and they all learned that uh, Especially uh, Jeff, he learned it under Coach Riley, and Tibbs learned it under Jeff. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I think you know having that background and having that knowledge uh, is helping him mm -hmm. at, at this point in time uh, because that, that's what the way we play. Mm -hmm. You know, hard nosed defense, get after of you, and and pound the ball inside when we had had Patrick. But the game has changed now, mm -hmm. and so but. Randall, you know, <laughs> he's special. You know, yeah. it's great to see that he has taken control. I think last year, especially during the playoffs, was a, a learning experience for him. And I think he's going to come back with something new, which you have to do every single year. Yeah. And, and you know, it seems like Randall, from his first year with the Knicks to now, it, it just seems like he, he's starting to handle the pressure and understand what it takes to play in New York. Mm -hmm. well, how do you think you were able to, to handle that during, during your playing days? Well, I think the most important thing is that you, you have to uh, 
not worry about outside influence. Mm. Uh, I think Coach Riley really taught us that. Just focus on the 12 guys at the time. Now it's 15 guys, mm -hmm. but focus on the 12 guys in this locker room, as well as as the coaches, and and not really let the distraction get a, get the best of you. Cause we're in the biggest city and the greatest city in the world in New York, and there's a lot of distraction, as you know. Mm -hmm. And if you start listening to, you know, all the noise, uh, you know, talk shows, radio. TV and, and all of Twitter that. Now. Twitter, Twitter now. Twitter now. Social media yeah. is like huge right now. Mm -hmm. And you start listening to and buying into what people are saying, the negativity and stuff like that. And it enters your thoughts mm -hmm. when you step on the court. And so uh, when I played here, I got the best, uh, what's the name, from uh, Trent Tucker. Mm. Uh, he told me, don't listen to talk radio don't mm -hmm. listen to, don't read the newspaper mm -hmm. don't listen to tv sports talk radio none of that mm -hmm. it just focus on what what you do out there on the court and that served me well mm -hmm. while i was here i never ever mm -hmm. listened to sport talk talk radio which are great shows yeah. don't get me wrong mm -hmm. but you know <laughs> it, it can be detrimental to players that really buy into all of that and so um, and it served me well while I was here. So that's why I was able to be successful. Okay, you never listen to Mike Francesa. <laughs> no. Mike and the Mad Dog. Mike. I play golf with Mike, but I, I okay. don't listen to <laughs> How's his golf game? I golf know. game is pretty decent. He's he got a decent, yeah, he got okay. a decent game. He got a decent He's got game. a lot of time to golf now. Yeah. Retired, he, t so. he talks you through every shot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I said earlier, John, a guy that Knicks fans, I think the move that got Knicks fans excited was Kemba Walker. You know, yeah. we saw what he did at UConn here. We've seen what he does at the NBA at the Garden, something about the Garden. What are you looking forward to and seeing in Kemba at the Garden? And what is it about the Garden that brings out guys' electric performance? It's just different than going to play in Indiana or Miami. There's something yeah. about the Garden that says, I'm going to drop 50 tonight. Well, when you step in inside the city, you know as players when you come here that this is the mecca of basketball and it's the city game has been played throughout in history. And, and all the great players that have came out of New York City and to talk about the legends and, and the street game and what have you, born out of here. And so when players come here, they know that they have to bring their game. Uh, they know the fans are passionate about the game of basketball. They know they're very knowledgeable. And, uh, and so you know you just have to bring your game when you come here. With Kimball, uh, I think the main thing with him, you, you're not worried about his play. You would just worry about him staying healthy. That's the main thing with him. I'm not worried about what he's going to do out there on the court because I know he's going to put on the show when he's out there and he's healthy. So that's the the main thing with him. Yeah. How would you describe? You, you know, you said that Game Seven against the Pacers at the Garden was you know hmm. one of one of the yeah. best wins you you experienced. How would you describe that electricity in, in, in MSG and the fans' reaction to you guys uh, clinching and, and going to the finals? Oh, it, it was bananas, man, <laughs> during that time and. You know, not just us, but the Rangers was mm, having right, success right. that they was having during the playoffs, mm -hmm. and it was very special. It felt like that last year during mm, the playoffs. Right, yeah, yeah. It really did. It felt like that the city was on fire, uh, excited about uh, what the team has accomplished last year, and, you know, and that playoff win against Atlanta was very special. It was mm -hmm. just – you just can feel it. You feel chills come, going through your body and, uh, and the excitement that, that was in that arena, and mm -hmm. we want to continue that this year. When you when you launched on Jordan and, and, and Grant with the dunk, hmm. does it surprise you that to this day the hmm. fans still cherish that moment? You know, when, when you're in the yeah. middle of, of the battle and, and, you know, you just want to focus on yeah. winning the game, does it surprise you that so many years later hmm. it, it's been etched in the brains of, of this fan base? Yeah, well, this is New York. <laughs> yeah. This yeah. is New York, and they remember special plays like that. And I was very fortunate enough to be uh, – be the one that completed that particular play mm -hmm. against arguably the best player that ever played at this level and Michael Jordan and so um and Horace Grant let me not forget yeah, Horace Grant yeah. he got the brunt of it yeah <laughs> <laughs> but no um I, I didn't think nothing about it it's just another play to me I, I tell this story all the time it, you know I didn't dunked on a lot of guys mm -hmm. throughout my career so mm -hmm. uh that was just another play that had to happen it wasn't until I came back and started working for the Knicks mm. when I knew that play was very special yeah. uh, in New York uh, fans' minds. And so uh, and for this day, somebody asked me since 2004, since I started working with the yeah. Knicks, every single day somebody <laughs> asked me about that play. <laughs> so that's when I know it's special. And you can think about all the moments in either football with Ty Tyree yeah. with the yeah. catch yeah. and 
and uh, Derek Jeter, Jeter with the plays. Yeah, oh, yeah. man, you can just think about yeah. so many guys. And those memories, those moments are, are epic moments uh, because of it's New York and, yeah. and sports is – is the thing and That's so uh, but culture. i tell people if that play happened in chicago it's just another play mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. It, since it happened in madison square garden it's it magnified. became very very special yeah. play when yeah. you win Absolutely. in new york there's nothing better than that um what's your win prediction what's your win do you have a win total for the knicks this year uh last year i, I said between 40 and 50 and uh, i think they uh, exceeded that yeah. uh so i'm going 45 between 45 and 55 yeah i said 45 46. yeah yeah oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, 55 yeah. is high you that's got john to, starks is going you got to put it up ladies. there you yeah. got to put it up yeah. there you got to have a goal to reach for all right a 50 piece nugget i'll yeah, take it 50 and 32 <laughs> yeah. i'm in sign me up absolutely man absolutely <laughs> you, you know one of the signatures of the 90s knicks was it was a physicality especially mm-hmm. as a kid we'd always see the battles with mj and the bull and, and the Pacers and the Heat, but it, it seems like that attitude almost started on, on the practice facility because when we had the X-Man on the show, he told us about the brawl yeah, that, that yeah, him and Mason yeah, got yeah. into, and yeah. when Charlie Ward came on the show, he told us about how he and Monty Williams had to run the gauntlet in practice yeah, and, and really, yeah. you know, show their toughness, and, and Oakley caught him across the nose. <laughs> I mean, uh, what, what were some of your favorite war stories from, from practice that you could remember? Man, uh, it's probably the first practice when X first got here, <laughs> and... Uh, you know, him and Oak had like a little tiff the, the year before, I right, think, right. or something like that. And and so we didn't know what that was going to turn out to be, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Uh, and so, and Mace was trying to prove himself. And so that first practice, all you hear is like Brahma Bulls <laughs> going at each other. <laughs> and uh, all you hear is like bodies, bam, 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 and hitting and round. So I go up in there, I'm like, I'm not going up in there today. And so, <laughs> what's up? What's up, Wes? We got so Wes Matthews I, Sr. in the building. I'm not I'm not going up in a day. I'm going to let them get that out yeah. their system. Yeah, you know yeah. what I mean? Because they had something that they had to get out their system. And all yeah. of a sudden, Oak and X locked up. <laughs> and uh, they stared at each other, yeah. and it was over with. Yeah. After yeah. that. You know what I mean? They became obviously good friends and, and what have you. And, you know, and so – it, it, it was wars down yeah. down there low. So uh, I can remember one time Jeff Van Gundy step, stepped into one of our drills. Mm. Uh-oh. And uh, Oak planted him in the wall. <laughs> <laughs> and, Jeff, and Jeff's like, Oak, you you know what? <laughs> oh, man, that, that was the most funny. He never stepped in any of our drills again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He stepped under Alonzo yeah. Morning. Yeah. That, was, that yeah. was the next step. Yeah. That's, yeah. Where yeah. Got his <laughs> That's where he got his experience. Yeah, exactly. We're talking to John Stark, CP the franchise, Jake Brown Radio here mm-hmm. at the Quaker Ridge Golf Club. Um, just a couple, other, couple more questions for you before you go, John. You know, June 22nd, 1994, game seven against the Rockets is mm-hmm. scheduled to tip off. You're in the locker room with a, with a 28-year-old John Starks mm-hmm. coming off that game six disappointment. What do you say to him? Uh, what do I say to the, in that game right there just changed the way you was thinking going into that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, I put a lot of uh, pressure on myself uh, to go out there and, and uh, repeat what I did in game six, and I didn't go in there with a relaxed mm-hmm. attitude. And mm-hmm. so if I had to do it all over again, I would have definitely changed the way I was thinking uh, mm-hmm. going into that game. Because, you know, basketball is about your mentality. Mm-hmm. And if you go into a game and with putting added pressure on yourself, which I didn't need it to do, yeah. and um, then you can't go out there and play a relaxed game. And I didn't play a relaxed game. Everything was just kind of like sped up for me. And even like – the night before, I didn't get no sleep mm. at all. So mm. I was working on no sleep at all, and my mind was racing. And so uh, I would have changed the whole way I would have approached that game just from a mental standpoint. You ever wish you were able to finish your career with the Knicks? And the, the, oh, no trading? question. Mm. No question. Mm. You know, I felt like when I got traded in 99 for Spree that uh, obviously Michael was retiring that year, and it obviously it was a lockout year. I yeah. just felt like we was going to go back to the championship. Yeah. And uh, I was going to get a chance to redeem myself. Uh, my prediction was right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but I wasn't right. on that team. So, yeah. Uh, uh, unfortunately, but you're still a beloved hero, beloved figure amongst this Knicks fan base. You know, for the youth that, that never saw you play, how do you want to be remembered? What, what is the legacy of John Starks? Well, just a, a guy that went out there and gave it his all and never took a playoff and and that was just the way i was taught to play the game is play hard uh to the final buzzer and 
that's the way I wanted to be remembered. You know, I was undersized playing my position, and so I had to fight and scratch for everything I got uh, and to help this organization, you know, get back on top, mm -hmm. in which I, I was able to do that with, along with my teammates. And so I just want to be remembered as a hard-nosed individual. Who is today's John Starks? Do you have a player comparison in today's game to you? Uh, I think from a mentality standpoint, probably be Russell Westbrook. Okay. Mm. The way Brody. he play, you yeah. know, he just goes hard. And no matter what the outcome is, he's going to give a 110%. And I respect players like that. And so uh, – Probably him from a mentality standpoint. Fashion, fashion standpoint. No, <laughs> no, no, no. no relation. No, there. He can have that. He can have that. That's, that's Russ. That's Russ. He's unique. Oh man. Well, well, well John, we, we definitely appreciate you for your time. How's your golf game? You getting ready to get yeah, out there? Golf, tea time? golf game is has been good. Yeah. It's been a little raggedy uh, coming down the stretch at the end of golf season. I think I'm all golfed out, but I'm gonna do my best out here today. All right. Well, good, good luck to you and enjoyed it. And thanks again for the time. Really right, appreciate. it. You guys, 45 yeah. to 55 wins. <laughs> here first. John, John Starks. Let's go. I'll take Number 50 all day. John Starks. I, I John, thanks, thanks again, bro. man. Thank you. Always a pleasure. Thank you. Right, Thank good you. Good Thank you. Luck, guys. Number three, John Starks. Throw a hashtag number three in the chat for John Starks, man. One of my favorite Knicks of all time. He's got time. me in the mood for a cigar right now. Yo, yeah, I'm, absolutely. I'm for, if you got some extra cigars, yeah, we'll, we'll smoke them. He's got them. All right. Cigars all day. John there. Starks, ladies and gentlemen, hit that thumbs up button for you boys. Throw a number three in the chat for John Starks. That was a moment right there, man. That, Love that was my guy. I, I got the dunk poster. You see in the show, the dunk poster is right behind me, uh, man. That is signature for the studio. There yeah. was no other thing that was going to go up. That was the first thing to go Bro, up. Bro, he's a lot of people's favorite player. You know, yeah. we had him on the podcast earlier this year, and Sal Licata, he was his favorite player. He wore the jersey yeah. while we had him on the phone, and he was a hero to a lot of guys. It's very interesting. If the Knicks don't trade John Starks, do they still get to the finals? <sighs> you know, because Spree was a big part of getting in the finals. Spree was big. Spree if Starks big. is there and not Spree, do yeah. they get to the final? Do they win the finals with Starks? Are they worse? Are they the same? Um, I still think Spree brought a different. He was. He just brought a more vibrant energy. He was a different energy. You waited for him to walk away to say <laughs> that, didn't you? All right, he's <laughs> never. We just keep it in the book. We just keep it in the book. This is New York. I mean, look. You know they brought in Houston to kind of take over for Starks to be yep. that shooter, right? So Houston came in, and the, the ironic thing is, is that. Starks was asked by Dave Checkett in nine five nine six offseason whether he would endorse a Houston or Sprewell acquisition. Not at the expense of him, but just to bring them as additions to the team. Mm -hmm. And he advocated for both of them. They end up signing Houston. A couple years later, they end up trading Starks or Sprewell. That's the irony of the whole thing. You always got to think, what if? Yeah. And, yeah. you know, he said it. He would have loved to finish his career with yeah. the next. I mean, who wants to – I'm sorry, but who wants to play in Utah? I mean, yeah, everything yeah. closed at 9 o'clock. You know, Forget alcohol that, closes at 6. Yeah. You know, he's not going to have a cigar lounge. It shows you, though, winning in New York, like we said, how much bigger it is that he won here. He wins anywhere else. He's not the hero he is in New York if he wins in Indiana yeah. versus here. So. Not at all.